Time is very short. Whether we have another 60, 70, 80 years or another six, seven, eight days. None of us knows. Six, seven, eight minutes. There's no guarantee. No warranty this body comes with. Guaranteed for at least, at least 70, 80 good years. There's no guarantee. So even age isn't anything to go by. So yes, time is very short. And the universe is very patient. If we don't make it this time around, we'll come back. This whole cycle of reincarnation, that's what it's there for. It's there to give us this infinite number of opportunities to get it right, to learn the lesson, to find that purpose. So it's up to us. And I mention this because we're already stressed enough. There's already enough deadlines. We already have so many to-do lists, so many action items, so many reminders constantly beeping us. So many ways in which we already feel like we fall short. So don't let this be yet another thing that you're not good at. Don't let it be yet another thing that you feel guilty about. Oh yeah, haven't exercised today and still haven't found my purpose. Don't let it be like that. Recognize. Time is infinite. There's a beautiful saying that if you imagine a mountain and the mountain is a mile high and a mile long, mile high mountain, mile wide mountain, and once every hundred years a bird flies by that mountain with a silk scarf in its beak. And it brushes that silk scarf against the hundred foot tall, no, sorry, mile tall, mile wide mountain. Brushes that silk scarf against it once in a hundred years. The amount of time it would take for that mountain to be eroded by that silk scarf, that's as long as we've been doing this. As long as we've been coming back again and again. And so while on the one hand, time is very short and this human life is very precious, on the other hand, exhale, take a deep breath, you've got time. But here's, here's what's important to think about. What are your priorities? Because that purpose, the only purpose that really matters is that purpose of waking up. The highest purpose is not about figuring out, are you supposed to go to medical school or law school? Or are you supposed to do this teacher's training program or that teacher's training program? Or are you supposed to get this master's degree or a diploma in that? Should you get a job right away? Should you go back to school? Should you... that's, not, that's not the question of the highest purpose. They're beautiful options. They open up a world of possibilities. But that's not, that's not the highest purpose that you're here to figure out. So don't confuse the what with the who. 
Meaning, don't confuse the what you do with the who you are. Your highest purpose is not about figuring out what to do. Your highest purpose is figuring out who you are. And when you know who you are, you're going to know what to do in all of the ways that matter. And so ask yourself, what's my priority? Is my highest priority figuring out what job to get? Or is my highest priority figuring out the truth of who I am? Because we've only got a certain number of hours each day. Our brain can only focus on one thing at a time. So you can't simultaneously run north and south at the same time. So it doesn't mean don't have a beautiful job. It doesn't mean don't be in the world or involve yourself, engage yourself, enjoy. It doesn't mean that. But it means ask yourself, what's my priority? Is my priority to figure out who I am? If it is, then the what is going to be things that are geared toward that. It's going to be practices, paths. that allow me, in the fullest and most complete sense, to step up to that plate, to accept that beautiful invitation that the universe has given us to wake up now. Right now. No prerequisites required. Right now. To know who you are. Or is the focus on how am I going to get to the top of the food chain? How am I going to have the highest income? How am I going to have the most prestige? How am I going to get on the cover of that magazine? Because if those are the priorities, then it's a different focus. But lastly, when the focus becomes knowing who you are, it doesn't mean that you don't act in the wild. In fact, my favorite spiritual scripture teaching is the Bhagavad Gita, which is rooted in the whole premise, the whole tenet of action, of doing our duty, of standing up, of being engaged. But engaged as a tool in the hands of the divine. Being engaged not about my will, what I want, how I want it, when I want it, what I think is fun, what I think is glamorous, what I think I enjoy, but rather how I, with my talent, with my ability, with my energy, with my resources, how I am supposed to be the tool in the hands of the divine. So yeah, time is short, but the beautiful thing is, it only takes a moment. It only takes a moment to wake up. But you have to choose which moment and when. There's a, a beautiful story of a, a student, a seeker in a monastery with the guru. And he says to the guru one day, he says, I, I'm not experiencing God. I want to experience God, but I'm not experiencing God. And when I meditate, my mind wanders. So the guru takes the disciple out to the river takes him into the river, and he holds his head under the water. And the disciples thrashing about, trying to get up. He can't breathe, gasping for air. Finally, at the very last minute, before he actually passes out, the guru pulls him out of the water. The disciples panting, gasping for breath. And the guru says, 
Did your mind wander? The disciples like, no, my mind didn't wander. All I was thinking about was air. I just wanted air. And the guru says, when you want God, like you wanted air, your mind won't wander. Want God. Want awakening. The way that you wanted air when you were drowning. And your mind will stop wandering. So when you want that more than you want anything else, you'll find it. 